Hello and welcome to Inside Home Brewing. I'm Jay Thomas and this is a granola raisin red ale I brewed up not too long ago. Came out real good. If you ever want to try something different in a beer, I suggest put some raisins in there. Really nice. Good color. Smells wonderful. I uh, I uh, toast, home toasted some uh, pound and a half of uh, granola and added some half pound of raisins into the uh, mash and one pound of raisins into uh, primary fermentation. Outstanding. Anyway, today's project, I'm going to be uh, building a uh, top crop yeast catcher. What it's going to do, what it's going to be, is basically you have a blow off from a uh, glass carboy. The blow off comes down into the mason jar. It's going to go through in, into the mason jar. It's going to be sealed inside there and any excess will blow out into a uh, into just another jug of water. And then as it settles down inside there, you're going to catch a bunch of yeast inside there. Keep that yeast, use it for another project. Top crop and yeast. I'll show you how we make this. Pretty simple. Don't need a whole lot of tools or a whole lot of uh, money or equipment to make it. Very simple. Just some copper tubing. Got some half inch copper tubing, quarter inch copper tubing, a couple stoppers. Gonna drill a hole, couple holes on the top of this. Put the stoppers in there for the uh, for the copper tube to uh, to go through. And I got a uh, a reducer. It's half inch to a quarter inch reducer. I'm going to be cutting that off to the correct size. And a uh, just a bottom cap. That's all there is to it. Going to need a uh, pipe cutter of some sort. I have this. You could use a little hacksaw blade or even a jigsaw, whatever, just to uh, cut the pipe in half. I'm also going to use a little bit of uh, the sandpaper to uh, clean up the edges so it's a nice, nice clean fit. Anyway, show you how this is made real quick and easy. I'm also brewing up a beer today and I'm going to be using this to uh, top crop, catch some more yeast for a uh, future project. I got my yeast started going. That was a uh, top crop. It's a uh, the German Munich. It's the uh, Munich dry yeast, uh, wheat yeast. So I'm going to be uh, making, I'm making a damp beer today. Dump beer. German, uh, it's a German beer where it's, uh, it's uh, mostly uh, Pilsner malt, Munich malt, but the kicker is you, uh, you use a uh, wheat ale, or a wheat, a wheat ale yeast to uh, ferment the beer with at a nice warm temperature. Comes out real good, I've made this beer before, it's, it's really excellent. Anyway, I'll show you how I make the uh, top crop yeast catcher, a little DIY for you all. Save yourself some money and it's kind of fun to make. It's pretty cool. I'll show you how that's done. So I took it out in the garage because the uh, first thing I need to do is drill a couple holes in this lid. No bigger than what's going to nicely fit the uh, stopper. So I got this little uh, step drill bit. And uh, here we go. going through that until uh, we get to the right size. Check it. It's going to be a little small yet. But two more steps I think. Bring that up. See what that looks like. Oh yeah, that's nice. And uh, Drill that other hole. Got one kind of towards the center, and then one's going to be more on the, uh, the side here. And same thing. Flip it over. Keep it nice. Keep it nice and clean. Just 
just don't get it too close to that edge so you you don't want to ruin the uh, that seal looks like it needs one more that edge cleaned up a nice nice fit for that uh, that stopper I was looking for some uh, grommets I could just put a grommet in there and then put the copper tube right through there but I couldn't find a, a grommet that would work out real well so uh, we're just going with this works fine so I got that on there so now I just need to uh, try to determine where to uh, cut all these parts at so uh, I got the inlet is going to be on on this side here so just shove that through but there then it's going to be connected into here like that so then it's going to go down inside of here like this and how much then I'm going to just uh, take a just a rough measurement and uh, see how long I need to cut this pipe at. That pipe is going to have a, uh, a cap on the bottom. But uh, anyway, we'll probably put it about here. I can always cut off some more. Five inches. Because I can always push this top pipe down a little farther to get it to the bottom. So we're going with uh, five inches. There we go. There we go, get that cut off there. That's gonna go this. I'll clean it up a little bit here in a minute. We're just doing a rough measurement. Get it all uh, cleaned up. Take some of that sandpaper. Clean up the end. I got this uh, little uh, brush to clean up the inside. You could also use sandpaper to clean up the inside of it. Clean up the inside of here where this tube will go through. So clean up this where it goes inside there. So there we go. There we go. Put that in like that. Shove that to the bottom. Make sure everything's correctly so it's just that easy now cut this about here that cut and then uh, do another one same length or thereabouts doesn't have to be precise it's just going to be where it uh, this will be the outlet tube go about there there we 
There you go. Let's clean up the ends of this. Okay, and then now I'm going to drill some holes through the side of that. This is a different one I made uh, before. It's just with uh, parts I had laying around. So it's just going to have a bunch of holes in the side like this. Take that out to the garage and uh, drill a bunch of holes in there. That acts as a baffle. As, it, as the foam comes out, you want it to, uh, instead of just blowing out on the bottom, if it runs through these tubes, through these holes, it's going to lessen up the foam so you don't have a whole bunch of foam just blowing out again. It gives time for the yeast to settle into the bottom of the jar. At least that's my theory, and uh, it seems to work rather well. At least it does on this one. So we're going to uh, go out in the garage and uh, drill some holes in here now. So nothing real fancy, just drill a bunch of holes in here. Got all those holes drilled in there. Just uh, clean that up a little bit. Get all the uh, pieces out of the inside. Going to uh, take a little sandpaper, clean up the outside, and uh, use that brush to uh, clean up the inside a little bit. And it's all done. So all the burrs are uh, cleaned out of the inside of there. And just take a little sandpaper. Clean up the outside. Slide that on there. Clean that up one more time. So now that's all cleaned up, we'll get it all put back together. Get the uh, stoppers in place. That's extra. And uh, take the longer one, put it on the inlet side. Shorter one goes on the outlet side. Just put that together like there. Whoops. Go through, push it down to the bottom, and then take the top, that on there. So what's going to happen is the, the uh, blow off of the carboy is going to come out through here, through the baffle to uh, lessen some foam. It's gonna fill up any excess foam will come out running out this side and into your just regular jar of a uh, little water with some uh, sanitizer in it to uh, keep the whole thing sealed. Pretty simple. And then as that settles down, it's gonna uh, be catching all the, uh, catch the yeast inside there. Then you can just take it and uh, after the blow off is done, you can take that off Put a ferment, put a uh, stopper on one side with, uh, you know, just a uh, stopper with no hole on one side. On the other side, put a uh, fermentation lock on there. Let the beer inside there finish, very important, you let the beer inside there finish fermenting before you do any, before you seal it off. Then once that's done fermenting, you know, just leave it sit out wherever you're fermenting in the uh, ferment chamber or room temperature, whatever. It's got to be done fermenting, and then uh, just put a different lid on there, stick it in the fridge, or you can just dump some of it, some of it out, and keep a smaller jar. Is what I do. It just keep a uh, smaller jar, dump some of the uh, beer off the top, dump the rest of the yeast into a smaller jar, seal that off, put it in the fridge. Pretty simple. Gonna uh, I got some beer going now. I'm uh, brewing up right now. 
the mat it's uh, mashing out. So uh, I'm gonna uh, clean this up and I'm gonna stick it in some uh, boiling water, get it all cleaned up, sanitized, sterilized, ready to go for uh, the blow off on this batch of beer I'm making right now. Clean up my mess and uh, here we go. So I just took all those parts, put them in some uh, water, give it a quick boil, kill anything that's on there. And I'll just shut off the uh, water, shut off the heat, and uh, and then just let it sit in there. It'll be good to go. And get it all put back together, and then it's going to be attached to the blow off tube, and uh, see how that works out. So now it's all set up. So any blowout is going to come through here. and be caught into here. Main tube comes down, goes through the baffler, catches all the yeast, any excess is going to come up through the uh, other tube and into the, uh, into the other jar of uh, sanitized water. And that's all sitting in a uh, pan, so if there is excess, it's not on the carpet. We'll see what that looks like tomorrow morning. So now it's the next day. It's working just the way it should. Blow off's coming out. Collect it in there. The excess runs out into here. Any overflow goes into the pan. So it's been about uh, 36 hours now. The blow off has stopped, but uh, it's still fermenting real good. So anyway, I'm just going to uh, put a regular ferment lock on there and get the uh, jar with all the yeast caught in it. Get, just get that uh, put away. Off there. They got a uh, clean ferment lock. Let's get that shoved right in here. That's bubbling away. All is good. We'll get this uh, taken care of right now. So this part is pretty easy. What I'll do is just pop these off. They want everything real clean. When it comes to this, when it comes to this yeast, you want everything pretty clean. A little alcohol. Get some alcohol here. Take that top off. Clean that up with some, uh, clean that up with alcohol. Get that all ready to go. Clean up the seal here, the lip. It's going to seal it off. And pluck this right out of here. And I've got uh, another stopper without a hole in it. Another stopper with a hole. Let's get that up on here. Get some uh, sanitizer water in there. Put that on there. And 
and seal it off. So it's still fermenting. Beer inside there is uh, still going to be fermenting. If you just uh, sealed it off, you know, put a regular cap on there and seal it off, it's, it's going to be disastrous. You can see already a little bit of yeast on the bottom. But more will settle out. See, it's pushed up that top already, that fermentation lock. So that tells me it's uh, sealed off and uh, everything's good. So I'm just going to put that away, leave that ferment out for a couple weeks and let it settle more and get it transferred into another jar. Or I could even just put a different cap on here and just seal it off in there, put it in the fridge little label on there let me know what it is everything's looking good so far real easy way to uh, save some yeast so now it's been uh, three weeks total ferment time on that had some settled to the bottom quite a bit actually I had it uh, two weeks at room temperature and then just uh, one week was sitting outside in uh, the ferment chamber It was at like uh, 50, 55, 57 degrees, along with another beer I got going on out there. So what I'm going to do now, just uh, like I said before, make sure everything's clean. I could just put another lid on here and call it good. But... Uh, I don't need that big of a jar and I'm going to get rid of some of the beer that's in here. So I'm going to put it into a uh, just a smaller jar like this. Very simple, straightforward. So these have been boiled, so they're sterilized. So what I'll do is uh, get the top off of here. And I'm going to uh, just dump some of this out. Carefully dump some of that out. I'll leave a little more than half of that beer. I'm going to fill up this jar now. This one doesn't have any uh, markings on it on how much the volume is. Might want to uh, just make sure. A little alcohol on here. Wipe off that lip. Let's pour that in there. That's going to work out good. Get it shaken off the bottom. Make sure it's all busted loose. Dump that right in there. You could f actually fill up this jar with a little bit of CO2. So you don't have any oxygen in there, but I, I've, I've never done that. And I don't wash the yeast. I just uh, will seal it off like this. Seal it off like that here in a couple days, and you're going to see how much uh, yeast we got on the bottom of there. That's about all there is to it. So the Coopers. Coopers Ale, and today it is 122. So I just put the uh, what kind of yeast it is and the date. 
so I know how fresh it is. Slap that on there. Put that in the fridge. And I'll show you what that looks like settled out here in a couple days. Well, it's been one week. And uh, you can see how this uh, settled out. Got a nice layer of yeast on the bottom. That's going to be plenty of yeast. You could either just uh, dump that right straight into the uh, fermenter or... What I always do is I just make a, uh, a little yeast starter with that. I'll use one cup of uh, dry malt extract, three cups of water, dump this in there. Next day it's rocking and rolling and ready to go. I had mislabeled it earlier and it uh, was uh, Cooper's Pale Ale Yeast, but it's, this one was the, uh, the uh, Munich Wheat. So I got that figured out. Don't want to uh, have it mislabeled. Here's my uh, Cooper's. I brewed this up last week. It's still fermenting in there. So just let that finish fermenting, then do the same thing. Get it, after it's all done, get it into a smaller mason jar. Put it in the refrigerator, let it settle out. Good to go. So it's just that easy. Just uh, some mason jars, a few copper fittings, which you don't really need the copper fittings. You could just put a, uh, a uh, blow off tube coming into the uh, mason jar one going all the way to the bottom to collect the yeast and then uh, one coming out the top and the foam left over goes out the top but uh, I like the uh, use the copper baffler it seems to uh, settle out the uh, let the uh, foam settle out a little more before it, the excess is blown out and then that capture a little more yeast anyway it's all good to go and uh, we'll see you next time inside home brewing